Um, so no formal agenda today. Um, I think, as we've already said, we have this group together to see where the companies stand, uh, where it comes to AI, where the interest lies, what are the firms doing already. Um, my personal uh, interest lies in how we can use AI, not necessarily to generate ideas, but to automate certain mundane and boring um, tasks. Um, so I'm kind of curious to hear from you um, if there's anything that your firms have been doing in that department. Um, a couple of things come to mind that we um, recently looked at, and they're not necessarily AI, but they kind of achieve what what I would like to see AI do for us. Um, one tool we've looked at um, recently um, was a tool um, that was helpful in generating um, different parking schemes. I think it was called test fit. Um, so basically you would assign a certain um, building typology and you could kind of rearrange, uh, do a very quick um, study um, based on the building typology and the massing study to lay out different parking ideas. So, you know, everybody hates parking for obvious reasons. We don't want to spend a ton of time. So this tool kind of helped us generate um, yeah. different ideas of how something could be laid out. So that's, that's kind of one thing um, that could be interesting in terms of AI. Um, another thing is looking for precedents. So similarly, how we use um, Google reverse image image search to find something um, that could be similar to our ideas, um, but maybe something that's a little bit more refined. With Google image search, it tends to look for things that are visually similar. So if you feed it a rendering, it'll look for renderings. And so you'll have to pick out something that's built um, and use that as as the initial image that you feed into reverse Google search um, and kind of refine the search from there. But how can AI be used maybe in a similar manner? Um, some other things that I thought we could use AI for is, you know, taking a daytime rendering scene and, and generating nighttime or a different season, populating a scene with um, entourage like people and cars. Um, so that that's kind of my personal interest. I don't know. So what you guys think about this. And, and I just want to jump in. So Daria, you know, you listed a few things. One thing I think would be interesting in this group because like, you know, we don't have we we're kind of introducing what people are working with and who's working on what. That maybe the way we follow up is this that these different things. Like for example, Daria, you brought up test fit, and I would just be curious with a show of hands or et cetera out of this group who's looked at or worked with test fit you know that kind of thing I, you know just to kind of get an idea um so uh and, and you know so this is just one point so you mentioned these tools and i think what one thing would also be interesting is when you you know sort of bring up like you brought up some of your experience just to get an idea uh, like who else is looking at that? So if we were to kind of go into groups on some of these tools, you know, we'd know, oh, only one person has looked at this versus we've all looked at test fit. Uh, that, that's just um, a comment I would make. And so I would say, you know, we looked, I, I think from a show of hands, I think a lot of people have looked at it. And then a question, you know, these are kind of questions as we bring up some of these topics is one, you know, who has experienced it? Where, what was it thumbs up or thumbs down or where has it gone, et cetera. And I, you know, uh, I think that's, you know, in this kind of group, uh, an, an idea of, of who's using what and where it's been successful or, you know, other people saying, yeah, we haven't done anything. Um, so that would be common on some of the, the tools that Daria started to mention or that we, that we'll talk about as a group. Um, and my feedback on that is I know we introduced test fit. We I did it at BKL. I don't know if you remember, but like I introduced it that like way back when and in here. I, and I have yet really to find that it's been a practical use. Now, who was it? I mean, you said you did. Has has anybody here, like everyone maybe has seen or done, has anyone actually practically laid out, used it to lay out parking or units in their uh practice? Because we have not. We have used it on a, a couple projects early early on. So some of our multifamily housing projects out in uh, Colorado, 
we have used it. Their pricing structure actually really made sense. If you don't have a lot of projects, it was kind of weird because it just fit in. Like if we only have a few over the course of a of a year or whatever, mm -hmm. it was great. It was great. The pricing was like, yeah, made sense. Slam dunk. Um, so yeah, we have we have. And there was a practical it. outcome. I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Anybody else else on TestFit on uh, your experience? Yeah. Well, what else did you, Daria, you also mentioned uh, reverse Google. Uh, that was, a, we had talked about that before, but your reverse Google search. Right? Yeah, that, that's just something we, you know, whenever we're looking for precedents, um, being able to find them easily. So I don't know if there are other tools out there, but that's just something that we've used. So you, you basically feed your image into reverse Google image search, and then it'll come up with images that are similar to your image, but it's looking at the quality of, of the image too. So, you know, if it's like I mentioned, if it's a, if it's a rendering, it typically tends to show you the renderings, renderings and that's yeah. not, you know, that's not what we're after. We want to see build work. So then you end up picking a build project out of that list, feeding that into reverse Google search as the first image and seeing what comes up that's actually built. Uh -huh. So has anybody used something similar that's more refined or gives more control? So, or or you, use Google reverse or or even use this method in your process. Funny, we we use uh, reverse Google image search for kind of, in kind of a different way. We we always start to uh, with like Pinterest usually. Um, Pinterest tends to give us um, batches of um, photo actual photo imagery or render imagery, but batches of things that are kind of uh, similar have share similar characteristics. But like oftentimes they don't come with project names or architects or anything. So then we'll use that image that we save off to then reverse Google image search and kind of learn more about that project that way. Can, can I so ask you if you can the, give us the other end? Can you give us yeah. an example, like like specifically? Um, like what sure. You're... Like if if uh, we're looking for like a glass um, solar fin precedent okay. or something, that's something that's uh, I think actually in particular that's something that. Google had a hard time kind of finding imagery of it would find like photovoltaics or like <clears throat> glass fins or metal fins or whatever, but it wouldn't really find the the niche that we were kind of looking for in that certain instance. But but Pinterest, because it's kind of it's not automated, it's actually kind of collected by human beings out there who have sort of a more nuanced uh, approach to thinking about like those words it seemed like it got better results. Pinterest kind of through a Pinterest search. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dara, what else did you mention? You, there were those two, and then I think those are those are the tools. Um, now I, I'm kind of interested in automating in automating certain maintained tasks. So I was actually trying to get some ideas from the group. You know, what, one of my ideas is to um, take a daylight scene and being able to generate different seasons out of it, different times of day, you know, without going through the exercise of re-rendering it. So, or um, taking taking our rendered scene and populating it with entourage, with people, landscapes, things like that. So if any, anybody has any ideas on how that can be achieved with AI. And on, a, I just have to say, add on to that because I've, I've experimented. I mean, particularly with Mid Journey, etc. Can I see? Okay, so one is you you can put in words, do it. But like what Daria is talking about, like inputting an image. Have who's done? Who's like taken images and done things on them? Is is that been through Mid Journey or di a different AI or? <clears throat> um, I've actually been playing around with um. Are you guys familiar with uh, Evolve Lab? Bill Allen. Uh, he just released uh, Veras, which like basically renders your Revit uh, scene, and you can type in, uh, into the prompts, and you could ask it to put like the season and various effects on it. Mm -hmm. I only just started with it yesterday, but it is is it uh, quite interesting. So you said, it, um, what's, can you say, what is it, Evolve? Evolve it, uh, Lab, Veras. V-E-R-A-S. Uh, v -E -R -A -S. Um, oh. I can share my screen quickly with you yeah. if you want to see it. Sure. 
okay. Sorry, I never use um, Teams, so one. <laughs> so can you see my screen? Mm -hmm. uh, this is the scene on the left from Revit, and I just put some some prompts in there, and this is what I produced. Yeah. But again, like I just started playing with it. Um, I thought it could be pretty interesting. And in this, sorry, I just because this isn't first to me. Is this a what? Where where does this sit? What is this? So a, it's a Revit plugin. So this is my is that, Revit scene on the left. Okay. Uh -huh. And then I put. I don't rem even remember what prompts I put in, but I was like, you know, this uh -huh. is a limestone building, an entryway. Um, I said in winter with snow over here. Uh -huh. Um, and then I played around with like uh, there's some toggles that you can play around with that like uh -huh. allow the AI to be more creative. I don't re really know what that means yet, <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, but I started to get these images at the bottom. Huh. It's nice. And like the lanterns come in uh, like it, it, it it's, it's pretty amazing, right? Like it just substitutes. It takes the other lanterns exactly. out and puts these new lanterns in. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, but I I haven't had much success with the other ones. Like um, maybe I'm just not good with the prompts. But with when I have no image and I put stuff into the prompts, I don't get the images I would like. Uh -huh. um, I was playing around with like oh like what would you know um, a Art Deco Robert A M Stone architects you know design building in New York look like. And I, I didn't get very good results, but yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, has anyone else looked at that? Uh, I'm just out of, out of yeah, I've actually I've seen that, um, and it it's interesting. Um, the thing that I noticed with some of the the renderings is like how it was changing the lighting fixtures fairly drastic. Or you know, I I say that, but there was a few other things that got changed, and it's interesting to see how you could do some um alternative schemes but then it right. makes me curious like how often it would do something like that when uh when you're not asking it to do that i didn't tell um, it, i didn't tell it that those were light fixtures by the way oh, okay yeah right Interesting. um if i can take a little bit of a i'm just curious like I, it's good to hear all the programs that everybody's using but I want to just ask a question to the larger group, which is, um, I guess, more philosophical or, or whatnot. But, but if we're if we're using the word intelligence or artificial intelligence and AI, and we believe that some of these things are true AIs, like, what do you think the AI or the AIA's stand should be regarding authorship to these programs? Um, right, like we 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 make sure that everybody on a team is is credited including interns so if this is an intelligence do we think that these things deserve authorship well i guess it's in how you use it right it's i, I don't think, think there is... i don't think their feelings would be heard if they weren't listed <laughs> which is why i, I, I will think say i don't know that any of these are, i don't know that any of these things are truly intelligences yet but uh yeah but I, I I am of the the mindset that should they 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 actually reach that level that I do think that there is authorship that should be credited. Like I, I guess when I look at it, I don't see a difference between somebody using an AI and a um a design director telling an intern to do something that the intern doesn't fully understand. Um, right? And like it, 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 you'd have to convince me that those are two separate things. Yeah, I would agree with that's a good statement. <laughs> well, there is the discussion out there about, you know, where all this stuff, the big pool of stuff and artists opting out or et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, I mean, that's an ongoing discussion. I think my opinion is I, I think when this because we're having this conversation because everyone's kind of getting started, it isn't that hasn't necessarily worked its way into a regular workflow. But yeah, I do believe when, you know, as this starts to absorb, those questions will be come more to the forefront. I, I, there was a good article. I'll I'll post it in the chat. I don't know if you guys have seen it from Nate Miller out in, in the Proving Ground, maybe about a month ago, but it was about um, 
you know, this, you know, very similar to what you're talking about, Ted, but also about like the terms of service and so copyright in both directions, right? What, what, what do you owe the AI generator in terms of copyright uh, or attribution? And also, you know, what, what things have they, you know, where have they scraped that data from? Uh, and what attribution is needed through that? It's a good, uh, it's an interesting article just about that, that fact. What one thing that I would say is that I think we're looking at using our our digital um, library here to generate our own uh, mid journey style kind of imagery for people who wants to get into it. Um, we're running into issues of uh, uh, you know whether or not it's should we use all of the images that we have or certain images. Some images are public, some are not, and how does that you know become something that we can use for? Mostly for interior interiors, um, you know, lighting, uh, furniture, and that kind of stuff. So mainly using the underlying technology, uh, and then using our own data source for it. But maybe you don't get as cool as images as you get because it's not tapping into the whole thing. But it's a good start, I think. Well, yeah, I'm I'm sure too that it's. It, you know, this is all evolving and right now. Maybe what we're talking about in this group is the a very early days of what how we're looking how to apply AI in architecture. But you know, the things Daria that you had mentioned were things that maybe I just haven't. Um, you know, not not that you haven't thought about, but like it, it, the mundane task of say writing a proposal or writing a contract is. Um, that's a that's a very weird case of you or that that's a very like now all of a sudden you're creating content that has other meanings and other parameters, right? Me generating a concept image for something doesn't necessarily have legal ramifications or it's on the, it's at the other end of legal ramifications uh, versus you know things that we might end up how do you know how to like I've seen people using AI for code review or for like you're saying, you know, writing up proposals or contracts. Those are like all of a sudden different realms of of um just legal meeting. Mark, you're on mute. Uh, just back to just, just to kind of continue on to different some of the different tools. Speaking of which, because I think some of the things Anthony you just mentioned and I think it was Heather is uh, so some of it is the image generation, right? You know, mid journey. We just saw this rare ass. What about chat GPT and, you know, sort of uh, those like things generated from that? Have, has anyone? Hey. Uh, Mark, started before, using any of that. before you move on, so Daria, to answer you, like if um, if you look up like playgroundai.com, if you that's like I mean all of these like right now there are like only two or three like image generation models out there. Dali has a proprietary model, Midjourney has that proprietary model, and then Stable Diffusion is an open model. And there are like 50 versions of stable diffusion in the wild right now. Like, I mean, I, I have one installed which I run locally, but there are a lot of people taking stable diffusion models and training uh, their own data sets to do something in addition to what stable diffusion does, right? So if you go and look up playgroundai.com, so that does kind of what you're, I think what you're trying to do which basically is like you throw in an image, like say you uploaded a photograph, right? And the photograph was like a like a daytime shot. And then in the prompt, if you say that like um, um, change the image to like in the prompt, it will give you say like edit edit the instruction, and there you say like make it a sunrise sunrise shot or make it like a, a nighttime shot. So it changes the daylight. It understands the photograph and understands the daylighting, and it it changes the daylight of the the image. And also like if you prompt and like put more people, add more add a boat, add a car, add a motorcycle, like stuff like that. It does does it for you. So I mean, these are all like just uh, additions of stable diffusion. I mean, and stable diffusion, I'm running it locally. So a lot of people, they're like, right now there are at least 50 versions of stable diffusion out there. 
run diffusion easy diffusion i mean you you name it they're out there so like and what the vera is one also that's also is running on stable diffusion and stable diffusion it's an open api i am running it in photoshop i'm running it in blender so i mean if you want you download play with it so yeah playground so, ai uh, you know, yeah. question how many just show of hands and who's uh, interacted or using stable diffusion one two okay All right. How, and so, so back to my just continuation of tools. So we're coming up with a list of tools uh, that are in play. Um, what about Chat GPT uses for and or practical uh, applications so far? Anyone? Mickey's have... wife. <laughs> Sorry, Mickey's wife used it yesterday to give her two week notice to her firm. Yes, she, no. she was. She's yeah, really uh, stressed out about writing that email, so she just had just ChatGPT <laughs> to write one for her. And <laughs> it came out well. Came out really well, yeah. Somebody <laughs> else did that at my firm, actually. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, um, we were using it, like our marketing team is now using it a lot because they can't get, you know, the architects to write very well. Um, if at all, they're, you know, and they can pretty easily put in some, you know, some prompts for it and get really nice. That's that's something nice I thought would be back. useful for is project descriptions and stuff. Yeah. Like architects are good with images, but not necessarily words. So yes. you're actually, you've actually used that, like use some yep. of those. Okay. Yep. It's really great for even more like code specific questions that you can't quite get answered either like via Google or you need more than what Stack Overflow can give you. Um, it's like if you get stumped by a particular, I don't know, whatever within a line of code, it it is a much more robust search than like even what Google can offer you. Oh, interesting. So how do, you find, idea. Think, how do you put that in? I guess it's sort of the same as what we've done before. Like if you go search Google, like I don't go to Stack Overflow and search for a question. I search on Google and it's usually like, you know, something about like, uh, I don't know, I'm looking for a function that does something or like I have at least what I've started with and then it'll spit out something that maybe gets me a little bit further than where, you know, reading through 60 Stack Overflow articles would. Do you find it and to can... be generally accurate? Because the complaint that I've heard is it'll get you further that, but it's not a functional solution. Yeah, I think it still needs work, definitely, but it gets me further than all the, you know, the top 10 Google searches might have gotten me and then maybe I can refine and get a little bit further. Um, I asked it yeah, yesterday so to create a study guide for the AREs and based on the test I was studying for, it would give me like at least areas to look into and books to read and things like that, which was pretty useful. Huh. Be, be ready to be ready to debug for like four hours like i asked yeah. for like a script for unity and like i got what i got but like it took me like like at least four hours to go and debug what it what it did so but do you yeah, think, I think for so like, a fact do you think it i mean okay so it took you that time did you save time or did it come out of equal or like what was the uh to be honest not? with you like my go-to source is like youtube because with the with YouTube, it's like a human is doing something and he has instructions and he's showing you visually. And YouTube is my first go to. So I was trying to see if like it can match YouTube. And I don't think um, right now for what I was trying to do with Unity. No, it could not. I mean, like I felt like four hours of debugging was not worth it. Like when YouTube could give me the same thing, like maybe 30 minutes. The thing that I would say about this is like with Stack Overflow, you get people who vote on it. And yeah. you know, these are people who are vetted to some degree. So I think um, the uh, chat GP3 is just pulling out from, you know, tons of data and just giving you what it what you ask, right? Whereas the interpretation and stock overflow, they're like, well, are you actually meaning to say to write it this way? Maybe there's a function here. Maybe you need missing library for this error to go away. So I think that comes in hand. So yeah. I we use it in the same way, but very cautiously. We also use it yeah. as a teacher, like a, we're doing future climate studies. So where they get the scientific data, what are the tools, what are the processes, that kind of stuff. But 
yeah, you gotta be wary because if you just take that and just paste it somewhere, yeah, if yeah. you don't know what you you know how you're doing it or why you're doing it, you can get in trouble. But overall, I think it's a great. Process. I mean, I I keep hitting hitting it back, and I'll ask that like when it gives me a response, that I'll tell like give me your your source, like from where exactly did you like find the data, right? And it it can it will cite you like certain certain references from ASHRAE or from like uh, CBEC. Uh, the it will give you the look at the CBEC survey from this. Then you ask for a link. Some of the times the links are broken, but like that's because like let's just say the website has changed or whatever. But you go and you can dig through, and down like in a hundred page document somewhere you'll find the information which is which is just citing. I mean like you you like you have to keep pushing for where are you getting that source like so that just so you're sure it's not making it up you know mm -hmm. well i think the high think... point about like going back through it is that i think the the value that i still would rather go through and find my own searches than use chat gpt just because i think there is value in the learning that you get from reading through the entire thing as opposed to just being sort of presented with an answer like I don't want to sit and read Stack Overflow all the time, but I get a lot out of it when I do. Yep. And um, a good, what, a good, so right, I've given it prompts where I'll say something like, you know, using the Revit API and there's a particular function that I want to use, but I'm writing it in Python and the documentation doesn't really have great examples in Python. So I'll say using the Revit API in Python, you know, write something that does this using this function and it spits out, you know, maybe 50 lines of code that that's roughly conceptually how you should do it but it it doesn't you can't plug it in, into the thing and play it and, and it works correctly so it, it's almost like the more specific the question you give it the it's just you what you get back is a very confident educated guess like it, and the confidence that that it spits it back out to you is the dangerous part because um if I say, can you give me a list of the 10 um, design or like the 10 most important design philosophies of, of REM Coolhouse, right? Like those are all very open to interpretation and it will give me 10 philosophies that probably apply to like 90% of all designers. Um, and I'll be like, this is really smart and it's really great. But if I say, you know, write that thing in Python, that, that's a very specific answer that, that has a relatively finite number of, of working solutions and it struggles to get that. So I think that, it will it will right. like if you're if you're saying like give me something like like a python script like referring in the revit api it's going to definitely call in the revit api it's going to call in the revit like uh, utility it's going to call it's going to call, load in the right libraries and everything but in that 50 50 line script there'll be like a bunch of for loops there's going to be a bunch of if conditions i mean i'm pretty sure like you're getting that code from it you're going to spend like five to ten hours debugging it like i i've tested it and like like i said like my go-to source is like youtube like that's the first place and most of the time i get like like good good uh good return on investment like in 30 40 minutes or an hour of youtube i can get what i need but with chat gpd is like like you're gonna debug it for like 10 hours like yeah i was i've uh played around with it um to ask it to create some gh python scripts and you know the first one and they were very beginner sort of intro, simple scripts that you can kind of um complete with like two to three grasshopper components if you really wanted to but it was struggling to get those those very simple um Code's kind of working, and then I would just kind of keep typing five or six times in a row. Code didn't work. Try again. Did try again. Try again, and it would spit out like five or six different um, versions of that. So it's kind of like it, it's never right the first or fourth time, and and by that point, it, it's it seemed to me like anything worthwhile um, spending the time to debug or use Chat GPT for was um, never going to work, and something that wasn't worthwhile you could just do yourself in five minutes. It's kind so. Of Kind of building on what Ted said, I think it just from the take of it is chat GPT from what I'm hearing. If it's something that's subjective and can like create a whatever, that's kind of a good thing. The project description, whatever. But these, but if it's like a specific thing, you from a Fox and Ted, you know what you, it's like those things might might not be the tool now because of of the exact requirement. I mean, is that that seems to be the consensus? Are there, let me ask. Are, okay, so we mentioned some of these tools. Are there any other 
AI, you know, we talked about sort of test fit. We talked about, you know, uh, mid journey. We talked about chat GPT. What about other? And then, then it was brought up stable diffusion and uh, Veras. Um, what other, are there any that we haven't mentioned yet that uh, so anyone would like to bring up? Depends what you're trying to do. I mean, there's an AI for everything right now. Like, what do you what are you trying to do? Like, yeah, just, that's true. Just, just, but just, I'm just saying other other tools. Just like because there were a couple mentioned that I didn't know about. Are there any that might be worth mentioning in case anyone here hasn't heard of them? Is there any just anything you know in in that regard? I mean, if you want to do video, if you have a if you have an invite, you can go on runway. On, runway yeah there's a control net there's a control net video on like google collab so that's like a runway but you don't need an invite for it essentially you're doing videos what you're doing with like in mid journey what you're doing with like images the, is anyone else familiar with that okay um, there's also just scripts which is also videos what is it trans just scripts just scripts d-e -E script oh b best script I, I, yeah, it's. I don't know if it's familiar. It's similar to Runway. I've never seen Runway before, okay. but it um, it's been very useful in the office for making uh, videos. It also okay. like um, it's able to you, it's able to uh, recognize your voice, and then you can edit over the video, and it will produce your voice and edit and edit the right words into the video. It's pretty cool. Huh. And is that a uh, is that a product or is it an open source or what is like? Yeah, it's, it's all on on the web. Yeah. Okay. The one we used uh, was um, we we had a uh, a video. We were trying to splice two. We were trying to splice a, a perspective fly in, and then it was going to fade into um, parallel or not parallel two point perspective diagrams that we had done. And so we had to go, we had matched the image as best we could, and we had to go from uh, perspective to two point, which isn't really something I guess you can do mathematically, but um, I used flow frames, which is a video interpretation to like add additional frame, uh, video frames. Um, and I kind of tricked it by just saying like, here's the end image, which is the last frame, here's the, the next frame, and develop 15 frames in between it. And that actually did kind of, uh, was able to to generate uh, an animation that goes from perspective to uh, uh -huh. two point or, or per, and, yeah and uh, let me ask flow frames is that in some other program or again is that like on the web or uh it seems like it's just a free kind of thing on the web okay um just for whatever another one that that is probably it's a lot older than all of these uh but i think it's it's kind of a fun thing that a lot of architects you probably use is um a program called Pix to Pix, P I, and I can post that. Yep. Yeah, but Pix to Pix dot video. Yeah, and so it's like you kind of train it. You 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 give it two files, and it's like this is my input. This is what I want the output to be. And once you get up to like a, a sizable library, you can start just giving it inputs and seeing what the outputs mm. are. So I think one of the examples was like they, there's one where they just you can input any kind of crappy doodle in it renders it as a cat or as close to a cat as as, as possible as a, a cat like as a yeah, feline yeah, yeah. okay yeah <laughs> but in theory you could you could I, I believe you could do multiple different file types so you could potentially do something where um you give it you know a make 2d of cad from from rhino and you could then train it with a bunch like if you had somebody who was a really good sketch artist in your office you could then have them sketch over the, the make 2D, what you want the sketch to look like. And after a thousand of those, you'd be able to just put the make 2Ds in and get out sketches that match your make 2D kind of thing. Huh. So it's something you would have to train yourself, but because you're training it yourself, you you are able to get- This is you the picks to picks you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Picks to, yeah, picks to picks, it's, it's, like, on, it's on Hugging Face on Google. Google uh -huh. Colab and like um, I've seen like a lot of the times like if I upload an image of like an artist like if they have like a green background and like you upload an image and it and then you say like swap it out so that like someone else is in front of like let's say Statue of Liberty or something it does it pretty well it makes people dance too. <laughs> but you're 
I think with kind of like your, jib your... jab or what? I mean, it's taking a video of like a human doing performing somewhere, and you can say that like instead of a human, make a panda swap this human with oh, a panda, okay. and it's gonna it's gonna make a panda stand in front of like Statue of Liberty and dance. So that's <laughs> that's quite a bit. Yeah, and it, I mean it's a little it's a little different than the others because it's probably like a generation or two before most of the ones that we've talked about. Uh -huh. But you know, it, if if firms do hackathons or something like that, it could be a fun weekend project or a summer project. But that's you know, and that's this is the thing is that's why I think this this group discussion, this initial thing is, you know. Uh, kind of started with Daria and everyone's different stories of what we're using and there's these other tools uh I you know I, this is where I think this is valuable just sort of commenting on ones you're looking at and that's why I always like you know I always like to ask like who's using it like everyone's heard of it but who's using it productively or what are other tools and so as a collective I think um you know we might have far enough reach to maybe enhance all of our uh uh you know, just awareness of these things. So, are there any other uh, tools or ideas that anyone wants to bring up? It's pretty old, but NVIDIA Canvas is something I've used a little bit. It's where you turn brush strokes into landscapes. Um, I've used it for just backgrounds for renders and things like that, um, but it's a little on the older side. It's been around for a bit. One of the things that's interesting about NVIDIA Canvas that I messed around with was if you change that, the file type that it creates, you can change it to like a PSD and then open it up. And there's a small window that you can kind of modify things in Photoshop before it breaks it. So like what it does is if you've ever seen a, um, a material map from like a rendering, it basically produces an image like that uh, as well as like once it, it interprets those material maps into, you know, uh, uh, landscape and stuff like that. So you can kind of take those colors and then paint in Photoshop. And it, there's a very, it's very small. There's like, a, but there is a little wiggle room um, as far as like what you can modify before it just doesn't recognize the file anymore. But I, I, maybe that window is where we can start to like put it into renderings. I don't know. So Mickey just stuck something. What is that? Is that what we we're just talking about? Yeah, so yeah it's a video canvas. canvas. Okay. Um, so you can. So take you do that. Doodle. You do the thing on the left, and it does this. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that and that you said that's been around for a long time. A few years. A few years. I, I think I maybe four or five years ago is when I first heard about it. Yeah. And is that free? Um, I believe yep. so. It's limited in terms of the size of the image output, but then again, you could also use an AI to upscale it, and, mm. you know, depending on how clever you get. So what you could do is like potentially, you know, if you, you download this or you, you save the file, you make a copy, you make it as a PSD, you overlay whatever it is you're trying to render into the image in Photoshop. And then you kind of, if you've got two monitors, you can put them next to each other and try to paint it a little bit better to get something that's going to work with your, actual building or or whatnot but i don't know how many of us are building in the desert you can you can also i mean if when i look at this like name media like the, this image i mean this is very similar to if you try multi-diffusion another flavor of stable diffusion basically like you're sketching on the left and you give a text prompt and based on your sketch and as on your prompt it's going to pull up something it's gonna like give you a, a rendered image of that. Like I mean, on the left you sketch a circle and say a spiral. It's gonna pull up something. On the left you sketch a circle, call it donut, and it's gonna give you a rendered donut on the right. There's a flavor of stable diffusion for everything you want. Can you pull your own image into it and then? Yeah, I mean, like I said, like playground AI and like okay. stable stable diffusion lets you lets you give you an image prompt right like how mid journey lets you do an image prompt like even dali lets you do an image prompt you can pull an image and not just your words i mean the reason for people avoid the use less image prompts is because like the words are give more freedom to the the ai engine mid journey wise at least i've seen the image prompts are like um 
my experience is like the the text prompts give you better results than image prompts at least on mid journey but you can definitely use your image prompts to guide your 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 ai to pull pull a certain um, and aesthetic the, and and i have to say personally like i'm i'm interested in seeing like i i I very touched on it, and like uh, these guys or a lot of you, um, you know, just like doing the the prompt imaging. I've never done or seen. Like I'm very I'm very curious in people's use of image prompt or like Daria, you mentioned, you know, putting this in and having it do other stuff. I I haven't seen a lot of that. So that, I mean, that's something I put out that I'm interested in seeing. Um, you know, so like like how 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 people are using that. Yeah, one of the things we're trying to um, sort of spearhead and understand is is how we can sort of we can create all these images um, from words or or other images but how do we can how do we more like better control the output because it's um in our office i mean in architecture we we kind of want to be careful about how we light the subject where we position it how we frame it how the honorage builds up builds itself um so we're trying to you know teach ourselves to how to use text to kind of get across the control that we need and imagery so kind of fits in. So I guess one concern would be when you do pull your own content into these engines. You're giving that it to content, them. <laughs> yes, it's going to be used on the back end at least, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. In their database. So yeah. that would be a concern with something like a copyright. Now here, here's something I'm curious to that note, and this was this ties into a question I was going to ask. So we we've kind of you know we, we've been looking at a few different one. Like I said, these these two guys have done a bunch, but we've now like Mid Journey seems to be popular, and we're going to get you know we we bought a commercial account that I think, I mean I think it was Anthony I talked to about this one, but like it it will privatize like it, what was that Stealth? Weren't you the one I yeah, talked to about that? Yeah, Stealth Mode. So. So anyway, so we we did this and we had you know we have that so that that's kind of Daria like to your question. Where I'm curious is if we have that account and we're doing this in our own. I, I don't know if I'm saying it the right way, but our own private messaging channel to the bot. Um, do do you think that would in any way keep that from happening or no? Like we put that stuff in and it's going into the pool. I mean, it's 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 not sharing it with the other other audience. But doesn't mean it's not using it to train its own AI to do something oh, else with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, once you're uploading it, like you're acknowledging that that uh, uh, they ha the bot has the right to like use it to learn it and to like do other stuff with it. So, okay. Um, but then, when you're then, using you're using stable diffusion, fuck, are you you're training your own set or? I've started it. I mean, we are, right. uh, hopefully down the road, you never know. Right, because that would be the like, yeah, giving it if you, if you had that right computational power, you could train your own set. Then you own the what training. What do you mean training your own set? I don't know what you're talking about. You're I'm feeding no, using our own images to train our own bot to do Got something it. specific. I mean, but Anthony, you don't need like a lot of computational power, my man. Your your GPU is plenty powerful. Like believe me, like it 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 takes like a couple of hours. Uh, if you have like a decent enough set, I've tested it like 250 images or so. In three or four hours, I was able to like train a train a little uh, test. Um, but I'm pretty sure like it's the 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 benefit is like if you're using stable diffusion, a lot of those libraries that that are being used to train it, they are already being pre-trained. So you're using those pre-trained libraries. So it's that's going to save you a lot of time. So, right. I mean, otherwise you think like like I'm telling you right now, at least there are 50 different flavors of stable diffusion in the wild. Like, I mean, all those people, do you really think they train their own libraries now? They're all using the pre-trained uh, stability AI. Right, right. Yeah, no, I, I think, yeah, the when the copyright question comes up here, the it, it always goes back to whether or not we're going to um, end up starting to train our own sets, which is, it's not, you know, unless it's for something very specific, it's not, I haven't found it to be like completely useful, but something if, different. I mean, some offices are already doing it. I believe Zaha does it. If you look up, if you look up Coop Himmelbu, they're doing the, they have put out a whole set of like, I believe they train their own AI, they're using it for, they're already, in office um, designers are using it to like 
for the future project. They put out a very polished video out there saying Blue Himmel Bow, the, their AI project. If you Google it, you'll probably see it. I mean, like how they are using their AI to, their designers using it to inform their future. Right. I guess if the if if what you're if if what you're going to train, I'm, I'm, I've seen like the Zaha stuff, the way they were training the set, and it's that isn't the results are not that different from what you would get out of other tools, let's say. Um, Mid Jenny and Dali, yeah. because right, like Mid Jenny right, right. and, and Dali were trained with Zaha's, Zaha's. Right. Right. Exactly. It's it's not it's that's you know if you wanted to if like to me what's interesting about the and the appeal of using those other training sets is that if you're in that period of discovery, right, if what you're using it for is to e explore different concepts than what you would normally, you know, I don't want to give it a bunch of ASGG buildings and then say, give me another ASGG building. That That's not, that's not something that I am interested in, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's not something we're point. interested in either. <laughs> but but yeah, and and maybe the exploration side is, I don't, I don't think once you start seeing the results and you get better at the prompting, and you start to feed in your imagery, I think it just builds complexity in the similar way as sketching or something else does. Um, and maybe that's something that I'm I'm sure, for those of us who have used it, you know, that's kind of what you've used it for. Has anyone used it for things other than like image generation or the text stuff like simulation side stuff? Uh, the only example I could think of is like the orbital stack CFD stuff, but I don't know if there's some other, um, maybe some other simulation side stuff that people are using. I mean, every like I said, like everyone has their own AI in-house AI right now. I mean, I believe Tesla is using it to train their lidars and like like detecting humans more. Like every everyone, I mean, like Google is using their AIs to like train for a better search. I mean, from our point of view, like commercially, what is available and how much can you do right now is the. So we are kind of limited. Like I mean. Like I know Autodesk wants to get in there, but they're so slow, so lazy. It's like, I don't know when they'll get in there, but they have a ton of data to train their bots if they want to get in there. I mean, they have bought in like uh, a space maker. We've probably seen it like last time they were like doing it, but so far, I mean, I don't know. I would probably like try test it before I go with like space maker AI right now. Because at least like in like US, my understanding is like, Testfit has like way more like projects being being tested on before, and they have more practical application right now than like SpaceMaker AI. Has anybody they talk about SpaceMaker being used in Europe? Has anybody like anybody know anybody in Europe that's using it? I mean, I downloaded a test and I played with it, but like. <laughs> It's. It, I feel like it's more not as robust as I want to see it. Mm. You know, I, um, I will a little feedback on SpaceMaker just and just having to come up because I it, it came up in something I wanted to touch base. I think you guys, you know, when we were at AU, those of you who were with me, remember, I like very excited and I talked to the developers and you know Zach and Heather and I was just, and I was just waiting because supposedly we were, you know, we were going to get put on something going with it and I never heard anything. And obviously it's been a while and I just touched base with her and she's Heather and she's moved on to a different product and whatever. So <clears throat> I, where I, I, you know, and I guess it sounded like what Afak was saying, but I mean, I, I've gone from where I'm like, this is the next thing. And I'm very enthusiastic to like, I like some ball has been dropped or something, but it's very weird because it was tied in with, you know, the CEO's, what's that, Forma, or, you know, so I, it's very odd, like, like, that it, it, it hasn't been dropped. But anyways, that was my recent experience with it. Well, it's 1130. Daria? Yeah, I think we should wrap up this session, but um, I think we should keep this discussion going. So um, are you guys interested in making this a recurrent check-in? What would be a reasonable time between sessions? Three months a or month? so. What three months did you say? 
too much too, too long <laughs> meet in the middle at two <laughs> sounds good okay one thing i would suggest daria is if we can get because here's all these people so you must have the email of everybody here right i do yes. so if we made an email group because i think now you know we have a list of stuff i'd like to maybe daria you and i maybe we can do it together but i'd like to summarize just some of the stuff send it out but mm -hmm. you know as an email um round you know that, that we could sort of pass things around or ask questions between now and when we talk again. Sounds like a plan. Um, hey guys, should... Can I share my screen once? I just want to show the playground AI. Please, playground. Yeah, I mean, so so I just opened a playground AI. So and it's pretty easy. Like, um, let me upload a and like what I was saying is like this is this was what like I was trying with like Unity is like believe me like it's you're gonna debug you're gonna debug for five hours before you like get something meaningful out of that. Okay, so playgroundai.com. I mean like I, like I said like there are a ton of these guys like pick pick your pick your uh, flavor of diffusion right now. So let's just say you're gonna add an image, right? Import an image like I I just downloaded like a photograph of like looks like daylight so in here you ju just go in and type like i want a nighttime scene oh this is what daria was talking about <laughs> nice and if you you can always come back and like always come back and like make more changes to it like yeah save changes yeah sure and then um yeah, so give it a up, up or down, and then again you can come back and say, mm. I want a school bus. <laughs> oh, yeah, that didn't come out that far, but but there you go. I mean, like at least. If you already have a render, you want to change the mode, the dial lighting, stuff like that. Yep. There you that's go. that's yeah. That's what I think that's what Daria started with, which is yeah, pretty no, looks no, like a pretty interesting great. possible time saver, or, you know. Yeah. Always trying to stretch, you know, stretch the output. In terms of resolution when you download that image, does it downsize it when you upload it or does it maintain the original? Most of these AI engines right now, like I mean, Dali, Midjourney, all of them give you like they start with 1024 by 1024. But again, like all of the they they are AI upscalers right now, right? They're again like there are a ton of stability AI trained upscalers which will take a 1024 by 1024. They'll give you a 4K. They'll take a 1K. They'll give you back a 4K. And they they'll do it in bulk. Like you can upload like 50 at a time, and they'll give you in bulk and if you want, if you have a video, they're also like AI upscalers will upscale your video like and and my understanding is like Adobe is already looking pretty heavily into like building a lot of these uh, AI filters into Photoshop. So maybe the next flavor of Photoshop, you, you don't need to probably like l go through so much of stability AI, you probably just do it in Photoshop. What did Heather just put in? I was yeah, just messing around <laughs> with input. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, this is this is the thing about this group is just that is that, you know, we've just had this short discussion and already, you know, some different things for I think we're writing people to go on. We can if we can share results or ideas or whatever, start with this group. Um, you know, it's like it's just just this has been very to me is 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 very pleasing without being too stressful or anything. <laughs> you know, it's a, I think it's a good group to start with. Sounds good. Well, thank you, everybody. I think we should wrap up. But and uh, we'll, we'll meet again soon. Dari, maybe you and I can work on a summary and uh, you know email it around and and uh, thanks everyone. Take care. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Nice meeting you. Thanks, guys.